You know, funny thing happened to me on my, or I should say, a funny thing happened to me on my way to heaven. <laughs> it was called life. Wow, did it smack me in the face. <laughs> Maybe you do. But seriously, I was going along, cruising along, you know, in high school, kind of thinking like I had my head on straight, you know, and everybody else was a little crooked. Yeah, <laughs> Boy, did I learn my lesson the hard way. But quite frankly, sometime right about, oh, just before I graduated, maybe a little afterwards, I got saved. Wow, that was cool. But you know, immediately I ran into some big problems. And it was called life. So, as I went through life, kind of learning and growing and discovering things, I began to find out about people. You know, people like you. <laughs> Man, I'd been a loner for so long, I really didn't want to be around people because I was like that ugly duckling shy person that, you know, the kid that got picked on, the kid that got beat up, you know. Well, I'd open up my mouth, you know, and sure enough, somebody smacked me for it. And those days, man, I remember having long hair, seriously, like down to my shoulders, like in junior high. And the whole school chased me down all the way into the corner of the field. And then they cut my hair. Scott King, you know who you are. Yeah, I remember you. You were the big guy that was a muscle builder back in junior high. Yeah, and you thought you were tough because you cut my hair. Well, you only cut about that much off. But in those days, that was a big deal. I remember being terrified, you know, like they're talking about this bully and stuff. Well, I remember being bullied. Of course, sometimes I opened my mouth and asked for it, but hey, what do you expect from a little kid? You know, I was a little guy. Five foot. <laughs> of course, in junior high, that was big, but I didn't grow until I was a senior in high school. So as everybody else grew up, I kind of shrank. I was just five foot. But I had a big mouth. So gradually I learned that, you know what? Life is kind of tough. Life is rough. Life had a way of kind of like messing me up. So when I got saved, it was kind of like, I didn't want to get infected by whatever everybody else had. I kind of liked my relationship with God, you know. I was a little nervous about everyone else. So it took me a while to kind of get over that. And then God took me on this long journey. And you know what? I learned that I'm a debtor to all men because, you know, everyone in some way has touched my life. Everyone in some way has participated in changing me and rearranging me into the person I am today. Is that a good thing? And I owe them gratitude for all that I've gone through because, quite frankly, I'm thankful for all my life. From the moment I was born to the day that I die, I'm grateful for what God has done. Man, you had it planned perfectly, God. It's a mosaic, just like this table. Beautifully fit together. You know, the stones are all cut and they're inlaid, you know, and it looks really fancy, kind of nice, you know. My wife and I really like this table, by the way. <laughs> but such as it is, it's inlaid with stones that are cut in a certain way. You know, the stones by themselves really aren't worth anything. <laughs> But they've been polished. They've been cut. They've been fitted into a mosaic that makes it look really pretty. My wife and I really like it. <laughs> Did I say that? That's kind of what God's done with my life. And, you know, I recognize that all kinds of people throughout my life have participated in helping me. Some of them, you know, I unfortunately probably still owe them either like, you know, $5 or $10 or maybe hundred dollars you know I I remember one time that uh, somebody loaned me something you know and I don't know if I turned or gave it back to them or not you know sometimes when you got life's crises happening in your life you never know what you got completely covered you know sometimes you blew it you know you messed up and you just do the best you can and that's kind of what God allows in our life that's why God said we're saved by grace because he knows exactly who that person is that maybe you forgot to pay back. Maybe you forgot to say thank you. Maybe you forgot to go back and try to undo whatever it is you did. Sometimes 
you just got to let it go and let God. And that's kind of what I've done all my life is that, hey, you know, there are things I've blown it big time. You know, I remember lots of things that I can think of that, you know, man, if I were a rich man, I'd go ahead and give interest back to people. But, you know, God knew at the time that probably I wouldn't be able to do whatever it was that I did at the time that I did it, including sometimes paying people back. And I don't mean something like, you know, ripping off someone for $1,000 or $10,000 or something. You know, no, I'm just talking about, you know, little things that we all forget to do. And then, you know, like maybe somehow Satan or your own flesh or your conscience gets a hold of you and you go, man, I forgot about that. You know, wow. And you really can't find a person anymore. And you think, ooh, am I a bad person? Yeah, you are. No, really, you're a sinner just like me so don't be surprised if there's things in your life that you can't undo because you will suffer the consequences of what you have done but you see God has mercy for you God has loving kindness for you God has meekness and gentleness in the form of Jesus to bestow upon you because if you are willing to be forgiven and forgive others just like Jesus said, the servant to whom was forgiven, then he was forgiven much and he was supposed to go out and forgive his fellow servants. But when he went out and was forgiven, he went out and beat his fellow servants and said, Pay me what you owe me. Well, guess what? The master of that servant came and said, Look, I forgave you what you couldn't pay me back. Now you go out and beat your servants? Uh-uh, it ain't working that way. I'm throwing you in prison. Because you didn't do what you should have done in the first place when I forgave you, you should have forgiven others. Well, boy, I figured that lesson out fast. Because you know what? I owe everybody something. Because I'm the accumulation of all parts of interrelationship that I've had with all people at any point in time that they've touched my life. Some of them I haven't even met yet. Or will meet in heaven because they prayed for me. Because they took the time to offer up prayers or they cared in some way to say, God, help that person. <laughs> me, yeah, that's right. And you know, that's kind of what God does is that He is able to see all and He wants us to know that we have all the answers in Jesus. Jesus has given us a better way to live our life. He has given us an exceptional way to be accepted in Him. Because if we just recognize that He knows what He's talking about and we don't, then all we need to do is follow what He said to do. Even like that servant. You know, that servant that you know didn't pay everybody back but went ahead and took advantage of the situation and said, ooh, I think you know I'm gonna make out on this deal. I don't know, so I'll go get what I think I deserve. Well, you can't do that. You really can't work your own little magic you know, routine here and think you're going to get away with it because guess what? God sees all. God knows all. And God will work it out. Because there's an old expression that people like to say, you know, about kismet or about, you know, kind of like what comes around goes around. Well, that all came from the Bible, really. It came from that place where Jesus said, you reap what you sow. Because, you know, it's kind of like you put in, you know, some seed in the ground. Guess what? As soon as you put some seed in the ground, when it gets watered, it grows. I know. Look around. I got all these plants that most of them came from seeds. Matter of fact, I think all of them did. But when they got watered, they grew. Well, some of them have weeds. So you got to pull out the weeds. And sometimes people in their life sow weeds more than they sow flowers or fruits or vegetables or trees or even those things that are profitable. Sometimes they just sow thorns and thistles. Sometimes they sow things of discord and division and strife. And it's kind of like, you know, you really want to do that? You know, don't you want to kind of like enjoy your life? Well then, watch what you sow. Watch what you put into the garden of your life. Watch what you're doing with those actions and attitudes that you have. Because just like that servant that we talked about, that Jesus said, hey, he was forgiven, and he could have gone his way and forgave 
his fellow servants, but instead he beat them and cast them into prison. Well, so too it happened to him. So likewise with us, we need to recognize that if God has so loved us and so forgiven us, then we ought to love one another and forgive one another. For we owe everyone and are debtor to all men in some way and by some means with which they have impacted our lives to make us who we are today. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. The world passes away in the lust thereof. Surely every man walks in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain and heap up riches and know not who shall gather them. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of things is death. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. I would have you without carefulness. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Lord of peace himself give you peace by all means. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You know, I think about that and I know it's hard sometimes to let go of maybe your past. Maybe you have things that you regret that you've done. Maybe you've really burned somebody and you know, you probably should have reconciled and you haven't. Maybe God will open the doors, but maybe he won't. Because you see, there used to be this great big movement in the church of Jesus Christ, you know, or in the body of Christ, so to speak, that everybody had to go back and, you know, write down everything they ever did. You know, one of those 12-step kind of program thing thingies. Oh, go find every person you could possibly find and try to reconcile and work it out and say you're sorry and, you know, make amends. Well... Yeah, if God tells you to do that, you know, if if you are working through a program and you that's one of your steps, then probably you should do it. But you know, if you can't and you're beating yourself up, guess what? God knows. God already knew that you wanted to, and yet you bugs you, and so if He opens the doors for you to do that, then you can. But if He hasn't allowed you the opportunity, then receive that peace of God that he can give you because sometimes you can't do it. It's kind of like the person who says, oh, you know, they died, but I wanted to tell them one last time. Get over it. If you didn't do it while they were alive, you sure can't do it when they're dead. So get over it. <laughs> Guess what? You live your life as life. That's how you live it. And whether it be good or whether it be bad, it's still life. And since God gave us life, we can live a godly life by doing as he said, and then we won't have those regrets as much as we think we will, but we'll have peace because he said we will. So you understand the difference? Life was given by God, and he knows how to arrange it for us. He knows how we should live it. So if we live it according to what he says, then it's a godly life. If we live it according to trial and error and experiment, then you're going to live an ungodly life because you're going to keep trying to figure out what it is life is all about. And if you don't already know by now, then you need to stop what you're doing and ask God about living. Because though you may be alive, you may not be living your life in a godly way.